Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, if you watched the previous episode, you know by now we are elbows deep in this engine rebuild on our 87 CBR 1000. Uh, so today we're just going to keep it rolling. Uh, in the last episode we got the crankcase apart. And uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we'll see inside. So here we have the oil chain. Here's the cam chain, the timing chain. Here's the alternator chain. Here's the alternator chain tensioner, which is a little spring arrangement. Here obviously is the crankshaft, the main journals, the ones that are now exposed when we separated the crankcase halves. And here are the conrods, which will also be checking the bearing clearances for the crank pins. Here's the transmission. We more or less want to stay away from here. Um, we're going to have to remove this, but we want to be careful not to disturb the order of any of the gears. And uh, very few problems are caused by worn dog gears, it's very distinctive. Here's the clutch basket, and uh, yeah. Now we should be able to just lift the uh, main shaft and the counter shaft directly out of the bike. Now these will fall apart. If I was to, you know, let these gears fall off the end, uh, probably have a bit of a mess putting it together. It's not impossible. Each of these gears is distinctive and using an exploded diagram, they're not too tricky to put back together if they do come apart. But uh, I'm just gonna save myself the trouble and try and keep this together. Now we can measure the Conrad side clearance. Uh, let's locate an appropriately sized shim uh, in this case, the service limit is um, one hundredth of an inch. Closest one I have is eight thousandths of an inch. And uh, just kind of try and jam it in the side here. And you'll notice these things will have a little bit of play. That's normal. Um, so try and kind of hold it to one side while jamming the shim in. Next, we'll remove the... Um, the con rods to take our next set of measurements. Now these should be matched. Um, to their original position, so try not to mix these up. Now this feels pretty smooth. The uh, crank bearing surface doesn't have any deep gouges in it. And looking at the conrod itself, um, this bearing surface seems pretty good also. We won't know for sure until we do our uh, clearance check. It is definitely polished. Uh, you can see the metal is a little discolored there. But um, we'll just have to see. They don't seem too unhealthy so far. Now the first measurement we need to take is the uh, small end. And service limit for this is 791 thousandths. Now we can measure our oil clearance. Um, so wipe any excess oil off of the surface here. You 
Get yourself some plastic gauge for this. We're using the green plastic gauge. Lay it over top. Make sure it's not laying over any of the uh, oil holes. Now, just like with the uh, uh, camshaft oil clearance, just torque it down. And this clearance is just fine. Uh, it reads about um, 15 thousandths of an inch. And a service limit is, um, sorry, 15 ten thousandths of an inch. And service limit is 3 thousandths of an inch. So this one's just fine. Now we just repeat this test for all the other con rods in order to make sure that uh, the rest of them look as good as this one. Next, we need to remove the oil pass pipe. Oh oil passageway pipe, I guess. Um, and this is actually an interesting time. If you're ever really sure, if you ever really want to be sure whether or not someone's taking your engine apart, um, check out these little tabs here. They have a coating. Not sure if it's very visible on the camera. Uh, they're painted along with the rest of this part. In order to get this part off, you need to bend those back. So if this part has been removed from this bike before, this paint's going to be uh, a little chipped or uh, scuffed up from whatever tool the guy used to remove that. Uh, so interestingly enough, it looks like these are original. At least uh, they haven't been removed before. All the paint's intact, uh, except for this tab, which I just removed just now. And for this, I'll just use a screwdriver and uh, a small hammer. It's kind of a light touch. Don't want to. Uh, You can use a pick for this, but uh, these things are actually tougher than they look. And it's a really good way to uh, spear your finger. We don't need much access, just enough to get a socket in there. small bolts for this guy. And you want to make sure to uh, check these passageways. Just make sure there's no uh, gunk or anything else in there. Yeah, it'll look pretty good. Next, we we'll remove the three bolts for the alternator chain tensioner. Now this one I'm actually kind of curious to see. Um, these bikes, if you're not familiar, they tend to have a, you know, Basically everyone on the forum is always talking about the rattle. And, um, you know, there's no real consensus on what causes the rattle. A lot of people assume it's a cam chain tensioner, which is, you know, possibly a good assumption in a lot of cases. And so they'll modify the cam chain tensioner, they'll replace it, the part's been superseded. And, um, but the rattle will come back and they won't, you know, won't really be sure what it is. Um, other people have speculated it might be the oil chain. Um, this one's not held in with a tensioner, and yeah, it's a weak chain. So I would think if that thing were out of alignment that it would fail pretty quickly. Um, this one here, however, is a big beefy chain, and uh, it does have a tensioner, which in my mind is always a, a possible mode of failure here. Um, so once we get this part off, we're going to check the slide and uh, um, take a look at the component. 
It seems like it's holding pretty good tension on this chain right now though, just from, from what little I can access. The battery's getting low in this tool. Advertised for a hundred pound feet of torque, that little drill is. Tend to doubt that. Oh. And she springs apart on us. Now, this looks like a little watch spring. I'm gonna have to figure this thing out. I'm gonna do that off camera. So I figured out the alternator chain tensioner. Um, turns out there's a little tiny hole right here. And if you plug that hole, it won't let the uh, mechanism come apart. Now if the mechanism does come apart, no big deal. Just make sure that um, this little spring is in its pocket and that this flat tab is resting on top of it. And you can push this flat tab to allow you to ratchet it in. So, again, I just got a small piece of uh, welding wire here. So we poke that in. And give it a little twist. Should be fine for reassembly. Um, but yeah, incidentally, the retching mechanism seems to be working. And the slide, actually, on closer inspection, um, the slide has some wear. I'm not sure if that's at all visible. There's a little bit of wear there, but um, nothing I'd call damaged. So, I don't know, this one's a bit of a mystery. But anyway, now we can see the alternator chain in all its glory. And uh, yeah, you notice this thing is, uh, be what, three lengths wider than the, uh, the cam chain? It's a pretty tough component there. That bolt's not supposed to be there, obviously. So, uh, before we can remove the crankshaft, um, we will need to remove the alternator shaft. Now to remove the alternator, um, we remove the three base bolts, and I think this will be enough for us to get it out. I don't think we need to actually remove the top cover of it. Yeah, I looked it up, and apparently we just manhandle this uh, alternator out. We just start with our clip tool here. So here's our alternator. bearing spins freely and uh, yeah from a quick visual inspection it looks to be in pretty good shape I don't think there's too much we can do to inspect that thing besides take it apart This piece. Okay. 
these spacers which had fallen down earlier. So this slide, well that's some assembly loop from what we were doing above. But um, yeah, this slide doesn't look too bad either. A little bit of wear, but uh, nothing too crazy. So with the crankcase all cleaned up, uh, we're going to do a visual inspection of the bearings. Um, and now I've taken a look at these. You want know, to wipe the oil off them first. These are pretty dry. But um, this one is showing a little bit of uh, a little bit more wear than I'd like to see. Now, in all likelihood, these are going to be replaced. But let um, me see again. There's kind of a a polished section which would be uh, kind of normal wear. Nothing catastrophic, but um, these prices, these tool or these um, these parts aren't too expensive, so we'll probably end up just replacing them. And this one's probably the most worn. Uh, you can see. Not sure if it shows up on the camera real well, but um, see the, a lot of polishing there as well as there. And uh, this one's not as bad again. But um, so yeah, again, nothing catastrophic. Um, couldn't feel any uh, deep gouges or scratches, so they're um, they're in good shape. At least not showing any signs of oil starvation. But for what they cost, these are probably in all likelihood going to be replaced. And uh, what sealed the deal was looking at the lower crankcase half. Uh, this one again, quite a bit of polishing. Likewise for this one, um, again, nothing that really catches your fingernail though, so that's good. Um, these ones are in good shape. You could theoretically reuse those, but it's kind of a false economy uh, to reuse these parts. Again, that one's a little polished, but here's the one which I'd say is worst of all. I'm not sure if you can see on the camera, but you can actually see where the, um, the metal's worn down enough that you can see the copper behind it. So yeah, these definitely replace. And um, you would normally take a, a bearing clearance, but uh, I'm not even gonna bother. I'll just go order the parts. So uh, yeah, gonna wrap this up. Gonna cover it up with some uh, some saran wrap so it doesn't get too dirty. Uh, obviously, this one hasn't been cleaned yet. Actually, probably something I can do while I wait. But in the meantime, thanks for watching.